Our keynote speaker today is Mr. Sean Casey, Executive Director of the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency. And we are just honored and very excited to have him with us. Um, Sean Casey is, as I said, is our Executive Director here at the Georgia Vocational uh, Rehabilitation Agency, of which Roosevelt Warm Springs is a part. Um, Sean joined GVRA in October of 26, but his relationship with our organization and the mission dates back to 2012 when he was actually part of the team that helped drive the legislation to create the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency. Sean is passionate about always putting our clients first and those of us who have heard him speak and most importantly, watched him in action, know he treats his 1,400 coworkers as family. And, and I, can, I can attest that um, it has just been a, a very positive um, change in leadership in our agency, and we could not be more pleased. Uh, before Sean came to the organization last year, he served in the Department of Administrative Services, the Department of Revenue, the Office of Governor Nathan Deal, and the Office of Planning and Budget. Sean and his wife Tiffany live in Cobb County and are the proud parents of a three-year-old and a six-year-old. Please give a Roosevelt Warm Springs welcome to our keynote speaker, Executive Director Sean Casey. Lee, thank you for that introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Lee, coworkers, teachers, other staff of Roosevelt Warm Springs, parents, family, relatives, friends, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for allowing me to be here to speak with you today. Uh, I am very excited, and it truly is an honor and a privilege. Um, and before I get to the graduates, and don't worry, I'll, I'll get to you soon enough. Um, sitting next to Lee, um, looking out there, seeing some of my 1,400 uh, coworkers, and you are my coworkers. Uh, I actually think of an old FDR quote, President Roosevelt where he quotes, I'm not the smartest fellow in the world, but I can sure pick smart colleagues. And that's the blessing I have every day, is the individuals I work with, alongside with, have got that fire in the belly and put the client first. And it is an honor and privilege to work with you. And so again, to Lee, to staff, to all my coworkers, thank you for all that you do. I do want to give a special thank you, though, and Lee touched on it briefly, uh, to the parents. As Lee mentioned, I have a uh, six-year-old daughter, a three-year-old son, who I love more than anything. She just finished uh, kindergarten. We live barely 300 yards from the school. And I would drop her off. Some days I'd walk her to school, some days in the car. And it would break my heart. I'd see her in eight hours. <laughs> she wasn't going anywhere. So I can't imagine what your parents went through when they dropped you off here, but then got in the car and left. And what they did is they didn't just drop you off. They took their most valuable asset, you, and entrusted you with Lee, with Lee's coworkers, with us, and so to your parents, to your siblings, grandparents, I want to say a very special thank you. Um, it is an honor to work with your children. Uh, it is an honor to work with Lee and our, my coworkers. Um, but I want to say thank you to the parents for the belief you had in us to oversee your most valuable asset. So thank you. Um, I also want to say a special 
uh, I guess, apologize and say sorry. And that's to the woman I work with, Robin, who's in charge of communications. And as far as I know, Robin really does two things. She literally turns the lights on in the morning at the office, and then she turns them off at night. She is there almost 24-7. And Robin, she, she busts her butt. And she wrote this great speech. And Rob and I apologize, because what I'm doing is kind of throwing it away now and kind of speaking from the heart. Uh, so to Robin, I apologize. I have three goals I want to, or three points I want to get across today. I plan to talk for maybe another 10 minutes at most. These lights are not cool. They're a little hot. Um, the first point I want to make is to the graduates. First off, congratulations. Please, thank you. Please, number one, celebrate. Celebrate this achievement. Celebrate this day. Scream it from the mountaintop. Enjoy it. Celebrate it with your family, your parents, your friends, your support staff, the community, the church, the teachers here, the counselors at Roosevelt Warm Springs. You have accomplished an amazing goal. And you've sacrificed. You sacrificed to make the decision to come here. You sacrificed working here. And now look where you are today. It is through your hard work and overcoming your fears. And now I'm going to circle back up about overcoming fears. But please celebrate this moment. Life is not worth living if you don't celebrate your achievements. So please celebrate. As I tell my three and six-year-old, ABC, always be careful. But please celebrate. Um, and don't forget, besides being graduates, you're also ambassadors. You are setting the tone for future generation of graduates coming from Roosevelt Warm Springs or Cave Springs. Act accordingly. You've earned this day. Continue to earn it every single day. The second point I want to make is you'll celebrate. Congratulations. Thank you. Don't lose that fire in your belly. Don't. The fire in your belly is what got you here. The fire in your belly is what got you through your classes, learning to live out of your home, and I'm trying to point where the dorm rooms are, a little lost here. Um, this is just the beginning. This is not the end. I remember being in your position a long time ago, a long time ago. Actually, when I graduated, there weren't even cell phones, so. <laughs> um, this is just the beginning. Don't be satisfied with today. Do not just be satisfied with today. Want more. As you enter the workforce, as you get that first job, as you get fired maybe from that first job or leave for a second job, let me give you some advice. Become indispensable. This is what I mean by indispensable. When a coworker, when a boss, a manager, the owner approaches you and says, hey, can you do X, Y, and Z? Before he or she finishes the sentence, the, ans the only answer is yes. Yes, I'll get that done. And if you have no idea how to do it, that's OK. You can't know everything about everything. Calmly walk out of your boss's office. Calmly go into your office, your cube, whatever, and Google it and figure it out. <laughs> and, and I'm living proof of that. And, and Lee touched, and I'll be brief with this personal story, is in 2012, I was working in the governor's office, and this is early in January 2012, and I got a call, so I, I hustle. And I, I walk into the office, and an individual goes, uh, do you know anything about vocational rehabilitation? And I was honest, and I said very little. Actually, I was probably dishonest when I, I said very little. And I'm, I'm going to almost quote exactly and they said, OK, well, currently, it resides under the Department of Labor. It's a $200 plus million dollar program, 14, 1,500 staff members throughout the state. Um, we're going to take it away from labor and set it free. And the exact quote was, if you could go make that happen, that would be great. <laughs> I had my poker face on. And I said, OK. 
and I calmly left the office, calmly walked to my office. I had a door. I closed the door. I locked it, closed the blinds, <laughs> sat down in front of my computer, and G-O-O-G-L-E <laughs> dot com. How do you do this? Become indispensable. Become indispensable. The only answer is yes. Can you do? Yes, I'll do it. Do you know how to do it? Maybe, maybe not. I will find out a way and I'll get it done. So don't lose that fire in the belly. This is just the beginning. Become indispensable. And finally, this is going to sound a little weird at a graduation ceremony, but please be patient, hear me out. I want to talk about failure. I look around, I look at Lee, I look at my coworkers, and I'm clearly the biggest failure of the people I work with. I have failed over and over and over again in life, at sports, at school, in relationships. But my advice to you is, in essence, embrace that and develop the skill set where you fail, and you will fail. No one bats a thousand percent. I don't. You won't. No one does. But develop, develop the skill set where you learn to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and get back in that fight. That is the true... <laughs> that is one of the true skill sets of any leader anywhere in this world. You look at leaders all over the world, sports, profession, workforce, wherever, schools, academia, they are failures. They have failed again and again and again. But they don't accept it. They reject it. And they get up, they dust themselves off, and they get back in that fight and they get after it. So that is one of my pieces of advice to you. You will fail. I, I bet you all $100 and you'll pay me one day, sooner or later. But that's fine. That is fine. Get back up, dust off, get in that fight and get, get back in that fight and get after it. You know, on a personal story with that is uh, we just actually had lunch and I sat next to one of your classmates, Auburn, and um, she speaks after me. And she told me, um, she told me how she, in essence, embraced failure and learned to overcome her fears regarding public speaking. And I even asked her, I said, well, have you, when you first started, how, were you great? Did you fail? And she said, oh no, I was not good. <laughs> she goes, yeah, I, I failed, I stumbled. But she got back up, she got back in the fight, she dusted herself off and wouldn't accept that. So please, in essence, embrace that failure and get back in that fight. Those are really the three main points I wanted to speak to today. I wanted to say thank you again to my coworkers for the work that you do. It never goes unnoticed, never goes unappreciated. I want to say thank you to the support, your support staff, your parents, siblings, grandparents, church, community, and especially the parents. Thank you for entrusting us with your most valuable asset. And third, you know, don't, well, second, don't lose that fire in the belly. Don't ever lose that fire in the belly. And finally, develop that skill set. You will fail. Life will punch you in the stomach. Get back up, dust yourself off, get back in that fight. So the graduating class 2017, I say congratulations. You have earned this. Celebrate. I'm very proud of you. Lee. Roosevelt Warm Springs staff, teachers, counselors, parents, everyone is very proud of you. You are an inspiration to me, to Lee, to everyone in this room. And with that, I say thank you and congratulations.